Hi everyone, it's JJ here and welcome to Be Colorful. This is the second part of the video where I'm gonna share with you 10 cards using the Tony Craft Kit number 33, a palette of winter colors and Christmas dyes to start the creation of the 2020 Christmas cards. To get a close-up look of what the kit contains, I refer you to the first part of the video where I quickly show you all the products inside. But now let's put aside the hot summer sun just a little bit. Let's bring out the cold but beautiful winter colors and start creating the sixth card. For this card I will use the sparkle spray included in the kit to create a simple but very beautiful background, thanks to this dark turquoise color and the shiny given by the very thin silver glitter contained in the liquid. Try not to make a mess, I'm going to spray the product on a piece of white cardstock holding the bottle tilted to the left creating a different effect from what I'd get by spraying from the other down. Off screen I have already created my landscape card in a standard size that's 4 and a quarter by 5 and a half using a 300 GSM white cardstock. This will be my background panel which I chop off to be slightly smaller than my standard card, which is 4 by 5 and a quarter. In this way, as usual, I will get a nice and finishing border all around my panel. So I'm gonna cut out another panel from this beautiful silver embossed paper which will cover the entire front of my card base. As a sentiment, I'll cheat a little and use a dye not included in the kit. I recently bought this strip sentiment using an amazing discounted bundle by Tonic Studios. If you don't have these dyes, don't worry, you can use uh, any stamp or dyes that you have or the stamp from the kit. I used the dark turquoise mirror card to die cut the sentiment. With the same mirror card I'm gonna create my focal point, actually it will be a kind of tag. I'm using the mosaic Christmas tree die with the matching die that cut out the shape of the window. On a piece of vellum I gonna die cut only the base shape, obtaining a subtle background for my window that will make it stand out slightly from the background without completely covering it. I'm looking for a color among my ribbon that matches the rest of the colors on the card. I looked for a satin silver ribbon. If you don't find anything that matches, you can color a ribbon or a twine with the mousses included in the kit, a technique that I'll show you shortly in this video and that I have already used for another card. You can find the link to that video above in the description box. Returning to the tag, I create the hole on the vellum through which I will pass the ribbon. And my card is pretty much finished, I just have to glue everything down. Using liquid glue I glue the background panel on the top of the silver panel I apply some liquid glue on the back of the vellum, taking care to put it only in the point corresponding to the mosaic window paper, in order to reduce the glue smears that could be seen on the vellum. I'm going to stick the sentiment.
and I'm gonna stick everything on the card base. As a finishing touches, I'm gonna fill the bubbles and the Christmas tree star with a silver crystal drop. If you don't have it, you can glue some little gems or use the jewel drop included in the kit. Here my obsession uh, for the nouveau drop takes uh, over and uh, I continue to create uh, tiny drops following the sentiment curve. And I can call uh, this card Dawn. For the card number 7 I will show you a particular technique that involves the use of a stencil to create an embossing effect on the paper. To perform this technique we need two special C6 mats, the silicone pad and the impression pad. Following the instruction of my die cut, which is a big shot, I open the base pad on the side marked with the number one, the one designed to perform embossing techniques, even with embossing folder, for example. I will do this technique on white cardstock that I will die cut with the smallest rectangle die included in the kit. So I'm gonna line up the stencil included in the kit uh, as well on the top of this panel, temporarily fixing it uh, with a low stick adhesive tape. Then I'm going to prepare my sandwich for the embossing technique. I will uh, arrange the layers in this order. The clear plastic plate, silicone pad, cardstock and stencil, and impression pad. I'm gonna pass all through my big shot. And here is the result. Another way to use our beautiful stencils. Now I'm gonna prepare my card base and to make it proportionally larger than my embossed panel, I create it by die cut the white cardstock with the largest rectangle die included in the kit. So I'm going to mark a fold line with my scoreboard and keeping the card closed, I will position the die, uh, making sure not to die cut the part of the fold line that holds the two pages together, that is leaving the left cut line of the die out of the paper. Now I'm gonna decorate the embossed panel by gluing uh, small silver gems, adding details that embellish uh, the card without wearing it down too much. As usual, I'm going to create a finishing border for the main panel using the embossed silver paper from the kit. With the Cropodile by We Are Memory Keepers, I round the corners of the silver paper. Of course, you can use uh, your scissors following the shape uh, of the main panel. As a sentiment, I will stamp Merry and Bright on a piece of vellum using a clear ink because I will do the hot embossing technique with a silver powder. Therefore, I prepare the surface with an anti-static powder in order to prevent uh, the silver embossing powder from sticking uh, even outside the stamp.
I'm going to melt the embossing powder, making sure that my heat gun is very, very hot. Then I'm gonna cut out the top and the bottom of the sentiment strip, leaving a very thin margin. I will glue the strip to the bottom of the main panel, folding the ends inward and sticking them to the back of the panel with some clear tape adhesive. Next, I'm gonna glue the panel onto the card base, using some foam tape to give a nice dimension to my card. And let's move on to the finishing touches, that will be, however, very subtle to keep the curl simple and elegant. In addition to the small gems, I'm going to paint some element of the embossed design with my Nouveau Shimmer pen, adding a lot of very thin glitter that will give a touch of beautiful sparkle to the card. And the card is finished. For the card number 8, I will use the expanding mousse and the stencil uh, included in the kit to create the background of my card which will also be its focal point. So I'm cutting out a 3.5 by 5.5 panel on white cardstock. I'm going to position the stencil holding it steady with uh, some uh, low stick tape. Then I'm going to spread the mousse with a spatula. Once the area is covered, it's time to reveal the result. An amazing moment! The amazing feature of the expanding mosses is that they expand with heat, creating a fantastic effect like a spongy finish. You will see the result in a few moments. So, when the heat gun is hot, I'm going to heat the mousse until uh, I get the desired result. And voila! I show you the before and after to realize the difference. For the sentiment, I'm gonna use the stencil again and place it on the bottom of the panel. Before, I spread the mousse with a spatula and uh, apply heat to make it react. To decorate my card, I will use some twine that uh, I will color with the embellishment moss also included in the kit, which has a lighter shade of blue, like a grey blue, than the expanding moss, which tends more to a dark uh, turquoise. With a spatula, I put a little amount of moss on my work surface. Keep in mind that I have an easily clean glass mat, 
if you have a wooden top, I don't recommend laying any type of product directly on the surface because you would risk ruin it permanently. So I diluted the mousse with water. I'm going to dip the twine into my pool and let the color absorb well. I'm not very patient, so I dry the twine with my heat gun. I'm going to arrange the twine in the main panel by wrapping it three times in the white space between the design and the sentiment. I have already made my card base, but before gluing everything down, I'm gonna cut out two strips of grey paper from the kit to create the left and the right edges of the main panel, both to refine it and to have a visual break between the panel and the card base. I'm going to glue the two strips of grey paper directly onto the card base, leaving a slightly white border on the left and the right side. I chop off the axis and I glue the panel with the stencil using some foam tape. For the finishing touches I just create a few drops with a silver nouveau crystal drop to give a touch of light here and there. And the card is ready. For the ninth card, I looked for a simple design where the cotton paper from the kit stands out. First, I make a panel out of white cardstock using the largest rectangle die included in the kit. Then, I'm gonna glue the cotton paper directly onto the card base, covering most of the surface. I have already made my card base on white cardstock, which is a side folding portrait card in a standard size, thus 4 and a quarter by 5 and a half. So I cut out the axes following the edges of the card base. And this will be more or less the design that my card will have. Before cutting out the white panel, I will create uh, the finishing borders with uh, the mirror card. I cut out uh, the piece of cardstock I need and I'm going to glue it uh, to the back of the white panel, creating uh, borders on two sides only, including one of the four corners. So I'm gonna cut out the excesses to create uh, a very thin border. Uh, and straight, of course. I'm going to round the corner of the mirror card with a crocodile. To give a touch of dimension to the card, I'm gonna glue the white panel using foam tape. With a pencil, I mark the area that more or less I have to cover. I'm going to remove the protective film of the foam tape and glue the panel onto the card. Then I'm gonna cut out the excesses with my scissors. 
and the base of the card is ready. I just have to choose the sentiment and add some final details. So I add a little decoration by stamping one of the stamps included in the kit, that is the holly. I gonna print it in the corner of the white panel using black archival ink and uh, later on you will understand why I'm using this ink. Also I'm using my stamping platform to be able to print uh, several times in the same position until I get a nice and crisp stamp. As a sentiment I'm going to stamp Happy Holiday on a piece of white cardstock using my Versafine Onyx Black, a perfect ink for stamping sentences as it ensures a clear and full print, but uh, which uh, I have not used before because uh, it's not uh, waterproof. Furthermore it is a slow drying ink, therefore in order to avoid accidentally smudging uh, the color I dry it with uh, my heat gun. Now I can safely cut out uh, the strip. On one side of the strip I'm gonna create a fish tail. And as usual I'm gonna finish the strip by creating uh, borders using uh, the dark turquoise mirror card. I'm gonna glue my sentiment on the top of the white panel. As a finishing touches I have glued some sequins included in the kit and I'm gonna use the jaw drop to give dimension to the holy berries. Finally with my nouveau shimmer pen I'm going to add some glitter on the leaves. And this is why I used archival ink. It is water resistant, so I able to use the water-based shimmer pen without smudging the stamp. Then I can say that this card is finished. My last card is going to be the unmissable shaker card. I have already prepared my card base, a top fold portrait card in a standard size that's four and a quarter by five and a half. For the background panel I'm gonna use one of the pattern paper from the pad included in the kit and I'm going to create a panel slightly smaller than the standard card. On white cardstock I'm gonna make another uh, panel that is uh, 3 by 3 and a half inches. Then with the grey paper from the kit I make the last panel that will also create the finishing edges of the white panel. Now I will die cut the white panel with this die from the kit to create the window of my shaker card. I gonna glue on the back of the panel a piece of acetate sheet with some liquid glue. If you prefer you can use a double sided tape. Then I'm gonna die cut uh, on the iridescent paper from the kit one of the mosaic window glass uh, also using the border die that I used just uh, now in order to cut out the figure along the edges. With some liquid glue I'm gonna stick the window over the acetate the two shapes match perfectly. 
I put the shaker card aside for a moment and I'm gonna prepare the sentiment by stamping Mary and Bright on a strip of white cardstock, which will be 3 inches by 5 8 inch. I'm sorry for any mistake about uh, inches. Honestly, I'm not very good uh, at uh, pronouncing uh, inches and fractions, uh, so sorry. <laughs> I'm using the stamping platform because I'm stamping with a type of ink that doesn't get a good impression at the first stamp, so I need to print several times to get uh, a nice and crisp sentiment. The ink is a Nuvo Diamond ink, which I reviewed in a craft haul video. I leave you the link on the tab at the top right and down below in the description box. Coming back to us, this is a fast drying ink, therefore it's not suitable for the hot embossing technique. But thanks to the stamping platform, I can stamp uh, on the same position again using uh, a clear ink, which will allow me to perform this technique. The embossing powder I'm using is semi transparent with iridescent glitter. I will cut the strip shortening it in such a way as to obtain, as mentioned before, a length of uh, 3 inches but with the writing centered. To do this I use the white panel as a guide and mark where uh, to make the first cut. The second cut will be 3 inches away from the first cut. Now I back to create the shaker panel, closing the area where I will put the shaker element with some foam tape. I'm going to fill the shaker card with the confetti included in the kit and some sequins away from the kit. After that, I'm going to peel off the protective film from the foam tape. And I'm gonna glue another piece of acetate so that the confetti can stay in place and I will be able to position the panel straight on the grey panel. Being clear acetate, the background will still be visible. On the grey panel I'm gonna glue the sentiment with some foam tape, leaving a thin border on the bottom part and a gap between the upper white panel and the sentiment itself. So I'm going to glue the background panel on my card base, as well as the main panel. Finally, I dedicate myself to the finishing touches, gluing a strip of uh, iridescent paper between the white panel and the sentiment strip. Instead of cutting out the excesses, I fold the two ends of the strip and uh, glue them inside the card. Therefore, I also decorate the inside of my card with my own embellishment that I made by stamping one of the stamps of the kit on a little square of white cardstock. I then heat embossed the stamp using the glitter embossing powder I used for the sentiment. I then finished the element, creating borders with the grey paper from the kit. So now, with some liquid glue, I'm sticking the decoration inside the card. Finally, I'm going to stick here and there some sequins and some iridescent stars. And the last card of this series is finished.
Now let's take a quick look at all the 10 cards I made using the Tony Craft Kit number 33. In the meantime, I want to thank you for joining with me. I hope you enjoyed and got inspired. If you liked the video, give me a thumbs up with lots of love. Tell me in the comments if you have started creating uh, or thinking about something uh, for Christmas, at least I don't feel alone. See you at the next video, I anticipate that the next kit will take us back to the golden years of the Belle Epoque with the magnificent Art Deco. So put some jazz music, go to Hit Art class and watch The Great Gatsby. Thank you again, have a great uh, week and be colorful!